Good afternoon. My name is John Hordisky, and we are here at Henry Stewart Dam, New York 2019. And I'm very privileged to be sitting with Jean Lozano, CTO of Media Valet. And today we're going to be talking about metadata, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. Hello. Hello, Jean. Thank you, John, for having me. I'm really, really glad to be here. Excellent. You enjoying the show? Yes, it's been a great show so far. Excellent. So artificial intelligence and metadata and machine learning. Yes. It's kind of science fiction, but mm -hmm. it's very much now a reality. It's People correct. are able to do it. So how can one prepare themselves to start using metadata and artificial intelligence and machine learning in their dam? How do you start? Okay, so I think the first part is um, people need to educate themselves about what machine learning is and what it's not, right? So what it is, is it's, it's a model that um, you can actually use data and algorithms to make a prediction. So it gives a prediction, it doesn't give absolute values, right? right? So the values are not uh, absolute. It says like, I have this picture, there's a 99% probability that that is a picture of a dog, right? right? It, it's not absolute that way. Once they have a good handle of what machine learning is, the next step in preparing is for them to actually have an understanding of what's available right now in the market. And yes. what's available right now in the market are three types of machine learning as Ooh. a service um, levels. First one is what I call packaged machine learning. Excellent. It's, this is provided by a lot of the cloud service providers. It's out of the box. It's pre-built. You don't have to do anything but use it and call it, right? So you don't have to prepare your own data. All you have to do is send your images to it and it will tell you this is what I think it is, right? The second one is, um, is uh, guided machine learning. And what guided machine learning does is it actually pr uh, provides another level of granularity to what a uh, package can provide. So for example, if I have a picture of a phone, I send it to packaged uh, machine learning services, what I get is a tag saying that this is a phone, mm. but that's as far as it goes. If I'm a telecommunications company and I need to know what type of phone it is, I can go to guided, send and train my own models and say that this is a Samsung Galaxy and this is an iPhone, Perfect. right? Yeah, yeah. So now it goes a uh, level deeper, but now you have to be more involved, but guided by the name of it, what it does is it actually provides you a wizard and all you have to do is upload data, tag it, and then it will give you a model. You don't have to be a data scientist. Right. Right. And the third level is specialized. That's where you need to be a data scientist. Mm. So in terms of um, the impact to the dam, as a user, I need to be able to understand the, what the impact is. For packaged and guided, the impact is very simple. It's just enriching metadata, right? Mm -hmm. For specialized, like for example, recommender systems, like you want the dam to recommend assets to you, right. right? That's specialized, right? But for now, I think in order to prepare, have a good understanding, focus on metadata enrichment, mm. and then um, don't focus on any functional enhancements yet, okay. and then just make sure that it's implemented in a safe manner. So is it never too late to start working with artificial intelligence? No, no. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's actually a very good time, right? Um, I've been um, working with different services for a while now, and what I've seen is like the services are maturing exponentially, right? right? Just to give you an idea, right? So I ran an image two months ago. I got five tags out of it, mm -hmm. right? I ran the same image just um, a few days ago. I got 12 tags with more granularity to right. it compared to before. The machine is learning. It is learning. So Jean, you know how much of a metadata fan I am. Yes, I know. It's the, some people call it is the cornerstone of the dam. It's the lifeblood of the dam. Yeah. It's critical to what the dam can be. Mm -hmm. The question I have for you is how will AI help shape the future of metadata? Yes, um, AI will, I think, extend the structure of metadata going forward. 
um, it will add another dimension to metadata. Mm -hmm. Existing metadata standards will remain, but a new dimension will be there. For example, um, right now, the, most, the simplest way of AI implementation that I've seen a lot of companies do is just simple tagging, right? Mm -hmm. Um, going forward, I think people will see the benefit of going beyond just tagging. Right. There's more to metadata than just tagging keywords, right? So, for example, one of, an, one of the AI services that is very commonly used right now is color recognition. Oh, of course. Okay? Yes, yes. Color recognition, it will, AI will actually tell you three things about color. It will tell you what the dominant background color is what a dominant foreground color is and what the accent colors are, right? And based on that, if you put all of that into the same keyword tag and it's red, white, and blue, and you're actually looking for an image where you can actually write text on mm -hmm. that has a dominant white color, how can you do that, right? right? So later on, I think what would happen is there's going to be a one-to-one -one mapping between asset attributes and the metadata that gets associated with it or the cognitive metadata that gets associated with it, right. right? And I think that's the big change that will happen in the future. And also knowing the nature of cognitive metadata is going to play a big role in it, mm -hmm. right? Because cognitive metadata actually is not absolute, right? So as I told you earlier, current metadata implementations are atemporal. It means that the metadata, the value that I put in today is valid five years from now, ten years from now, because that is a fact. Mm. Cognitive metadata is not a fact, it's a prediction, right? So now, being a prediction, there is a confidence level to that prediction, right? So we have to take into account when discovering or searching for assets, what those confidence levels are. So it's to the advantage of the user to actually have some sort of filterability like, oh, I want only to see any assets with this metadata that was predicted with a 99% level of confidence. Right. Oh, I'm not getting enough results. Maybe I should lower it to 80. I so see. I think that is a big impact of AI on metadata. And I'm glad you defined cognitive metadata because yeah. I know that's something that you have spoken much about and right. I see it a lot in writing. So I'm glad that the users today and the, the viewers of this will be able to see and understand a little bit more about cognitive metadata. Yeah, because it, it, it's very similar in, in a sense like we, mm -hmm. we live in a world where we have metadata and then you have like the embedded metadata which you're familiar with. Right. But embedded are absolutes and then cognitive is the one that's predictive. Mm -hmm. So you know the next question that I should ask because yeah. we're all familiar with metadata. We know it is... It's a costly endeavor. There's people yes. involved, there's technology involved, there's process involved. Right. So what about the cost of artificial intelligence and machine learning? That, that's a very, very good question, John. Um, in a lot of the discussions we have with major enterprise customers that we try to onboard, especially when we're dealing with a massive volume of assets, right? the first question that they have is like, our metadata is not well defined right now mm -hmm. right in order to take advantage of the dam the question is how many interns do we have to train and hire in order to populate the metadata that's right then they run the numbers and oh my god it's so expensive like yeah we pay x for the dam but we have to pay x to produce that metadata and and it's not you know, um, it, it, it's a significant investment on the part of the damn customer. Then we say then that what if you start enriching metadata first to make at least have a baseline um, set that could improve the discoverability, although it's not to the level of providing you with tribal knowledge that right. your, your curators would actually know. And when that is put into the equation, it's a fraction of the cost of doing the manual tagging, right? right? So it is, and, but again, it, it's, it's a matter of time. Mm -hmm. We are where we are right now. Compared to last year, machine has learned. Yes. It is way more mature right now. 
and the value that it's giving is way more than the value it was giving before. Mm -hmm. And I think people will start to realize the value that this will now create. Absolutely. And they can be proactive in that as well, exactly. thinking for their budgets for the next year to two years. They're able to start preparing for these in their budgets. So that's Correct. good. That's yes. good. So what makes artificial intelligence so special? In terms of the sense for metadata, metadata is always sort of given somewhat generic type information or you know, results. What makes artificial intelligence so special? Um, well, what makes artificial intelligence really special is um, it, it improves now the ability of the system to replicate what some would consider to be tribal knowledge, mm. right? Um, for example, again, um, let, let's take for example that uh, scenario where we have a telecommunications company, right? right? Um, if, if we actually have the, a curator who's familiar with all the phone models that they offer, which is probably 50 different type of handsets that they currently offer, mm -hmm. right? Um, and transfer that knowledge into guided machine learning, right? What's going to happen is now that becomes a scalable solution mm -hmm. and that one person doesn't become a bottleneck anymore. So that person can be the person through guided machine learning can transfer over his knowledge and train the model. And then all he has to do is continuously train the model as well. Mm. Right? Um, what happens is like, because it's a prediction, right. sometimes there could be false positives, mm. right? And when that happens, right, oh, they tag this as an as a Samsung Galaxy S10, it's actually an S9, mm -hmm. right? Then send it back to the model, train it again, because you didn't get it right, to the point that it, it starts to do that. But it, it's not a one-time thing, it's an iterative thing. Right. I think that sh having that be a part of it actually gives a great advantage uh, for future metadata. I think that's gonna be, the metadata results will have much more advantageous results than they do now, which I think is a very strong thing for users now that they're thinking of this. That's yeah, right. that's true because right um, with, with metadata, when, when you are able to now apply it in, in the volume or, or the scale mm. that a lot of the enterprise customers that we see are applying it to. Absolutely. I was just uh, talking to somebody who was talking about 40 million assets, right? Oh so, and that was just at the conference below, we were talking about like why why they're, why they're interested in, in machine learning. They went to the booth and said like, well, we have 40 million assets. Like, <laughs> of course, you know, yeah. we can have a battalion of, of interns trying to tag that. Absolutely. Right? Or we can have machine learning. Yeah. So do you think metadata standards will change because of artificial intelligence? Yes, they will change. They will be updated. Mm. Um, but um, I think the update will be more of an extension to the standard rather than a revamp of the standard, right? Because it's just extending it with another dimension of cognitive metadata. Um, and with cognitive metadata, the reason what that would drive the change is um, what I call consumerization of IT, yes. right? Um, if customers see it on their consumer apps, they would expect it on their enterprise apps like a dam, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And when they expect it, companies like us and other vendors are forced to now deliver on that same promise, right? And in order to do that, um, we have to start working on AI, implement enriching metadata. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, some sort of standard has to be applied. Absolutely. This is an exciting time to be working in digital asset management with artificial intelligence. Thank you, Jean, for this exciting discussion on metadata and artificial intelligence. It was excellent. Thank you, everyone, for watching, and look forward to seeing you again. Thank you.